Today, we are on location, and I'm going to show you how I analyze an environment to find interesting or beautiful pockets of light. Hey everybody, Lindsay Adler here. On location, I often am looking for certain environments or circumstances that I know from years of experience always give me beautiful, flattering, or interesting lighting. And so that's what I want to show you today. As I approach a location or environment when I'm on a shoot, I'm looking around for these same circumstances over and over again. Maybe it's an overhang, like scaffolding or a porch, or maybe it's a wall or something hit by the sun bouncing light. Those are the sorts of things that I've trained my mind to look for, and I want to share that with you. This means that no matter the time of day or no matter the location I'm in, I can guarantee that I'm going to get beautiful results. All right, so I want to begin with just a little piece of advice. And that piece of advice is train your eye to see natural light. Where is it coming from? And I don't just mean the sun. Where is that light actually bouncing from? Is there, for example, an opening in the trees? And so even though the sun may be behind a cloud overhead, the opening is actually that space in the trees. That's the light source. Or maybe it's not the sun itself, but the way that the sun is bouncing off a sidewalk near your subject. And so the best way to do that is take another photographer friend, walk around, have them stand in a spot and take a picture. Then rotate them a little bit, take another picture, rotate them again and do it in 360. And as you move around and follow with that subject, how does the light change? When did you find it to be most flattering? And then go back to that position and try to figure out where is the light coming from? Then when you train your eye, you can start to look for those lighting circumstances over and over again. And that's exactly what has helped me be so successful on every shoot that I'm on. I know what I'm looking for in order to find beautiful light. All right, so that being said, there are three main lighting situations that I look for when I'm on location. The first is called a natural reflector. And what that means is on a sunny day, I am looking for something that is bouncing the light of the sun that will create a broad, beautiful, large, soft light on my subject. In other words, I might look for the light of the sun hitting a big white wall, the side of a building, maybe bouncing off of a sidewalk, or it could even be the side of a white moving van. Now, it's the same idea as bringing a white reflector on location and bouncing that light onto your subject. It's broad, it's soft, it's beautiful. However, when you find a side of a building or a sidewalk or something else, it's like the biggest reflector you could possibly bring. In fact, it's impossibly large. And if you know a little bit about lighting, the larger the size of the light source, the softer the light. And so a natural reflector is my first go-to lighting situation, especially on a sunny day. The second lighting circumstance that I look for is something called covered shade. In other words, it means that there's something above the subject's head that is blocking off the light from above. This could be a million things. It could be an overhang like behind me, it could be scaffolding, it could be a porch, it could even be garage door lighting. What this means is that there's no light that is coming in from above. So all of the light is coming from in front of the subject which makes it really soft and bright in the eyes. Now there's one more consideration for covered shade. Yes, the light on the subject's face is going to be beautiful, but take a look at other light hitting the subject. So for example, if it's a scaffold and there's a covering overhead, is there light maybe bouncing off a building behind the subject that you might move them in that direction so that all of a sudden you have a beautiful rim light? I look for all of the light sources in the scene, not just the light hitting the center of the subject's face. The third and final lighting situation that is one of my go-tos is a little bit more stylistic to me. It's not something that I would recommend for everyday portraiture, but instead when you want sculpted or dramatic light or maybe you are doing a fashion shoot. And that light is a slice of light created by sunlight. I'm looking for the edge of the sun to the shadow because then I can place that edge of light down the middle of the subject's face so I can create a beautiful combination of highlight and shadow. This one is a lot more difficult to work with, but the results can be truly striking. So now that you know those three different types of lighting situations that I look for, let's go see them in action. All right, so this is the example of our first lighting circumstance, which of course is a natural bounce reflector. Here we have an entire side of a building as well as the sidewalk here. All of that is our light source. What's beautiful about it is when the sun hits it and reflects off, it is bigger than the biggest reflector we could possibly have. 
which is going to be gorgeous, flattering light on our face. But one of the important things I want you to know is that that is not the only light source. Now, for example, there's open sky above me. That might create a little light on her. Or depending on where she stands, she might even catch some of the direct sunlight. And so you really have to train your eye to see all of the light in the environment. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. All right, so let's come around this way. Beautiful, and take uh, two steps back, right there. Perfect, now chin down. Okay, now, here's what I see first and foremost. Uh, that is beautiful light on her face. That is what I'm talking about with that natural bounced reflector. It is all of this, it is super, super flat, which I love. But over to the left-hand side of the frame, we have a big open sky here. And when that light hits her face, when she turns her face to the right, I can see the highlights on her cheeks, on her nose, even across her chest and her shoulders. And it's a little cooler because it's blue. So can you turn your shoulders that way as well? Perfect. And then just wipe some hair off your cheek real quick on this side. Beautiful. Great. Now I do that same exact shot and then chin down a little and towards me just a smidge. Great, and chin back up. So if you look at that shot, it's very subtle but you see just a little bit of light on the tops of her cheekbones, on her nose, even a little bit on her shoulder, and that is that open sky. So really, we've got the bounce reflector as a light source, the open sky as a light source, but then there's another one in this scene. It's the sun itself. So if I pop her forward just a little bit, right there, all of a sudden, now she has a hair light from the sun. Okay, beautiful, so let me take another test here. Great, and then look back at me. Pretty. So as you can see, when I brought her forward, she was also getting that beautiful hair light on her as well. Now, if I wanted to be really specific about this environment, there are other light sources. For example, there's little pools of light on the ground that are caused by reflections off of the windows in the building. That's a different quality of light, or even reflections off of the shiny sides of cars. So you train your eye, you see the ideal types of light, and then you move your subject around. So that being said, I'm gonna play around with this and get a beautiful beauty shot of her. All right, so this is an example of our second lighting circumstance, which is covered shade. And so right now, my subject is in the shade of the trees, but there's nothing directly over her head, maybe a little bit of leaves. However, behind her, that overhang, if she steps underneath it, will cover the light above her head, making it all frontal light. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Can you uh, stand over here? I'm gonna stand her right on the edge. Great, and take one half step out of the sun. Right there, okay. So right now, if I look directly above her head, She's not quite underneath the overhang. It's still open sky. And what you'll notice is she's got a lot of highlights on her forehead, her cheeks, and her nose. So I'm gonna take a, a shot of that and show you what it looks like. And then we're gonna step her back just a couple of feet. So perfect. Great, and then can you take three steps back? Okay, so now as she's done that, there's no more light above her head. Everything is coming from uh, in front of her, maybe even a little bounce here which means the light is perfectly even and it gives her huge catch lights. So, same thing. Great. So that is as simple as covered shade can be. And remember, this could be a garage door, it could be a porch, it could be scaffolding, any sort of overhang. But, as I've already mentioned, you wanna look for other light sources in the scene. So you'll notice that on either side of the overhang, there's openings. And the sun is actually hitting some of those windows behind her. And so I see that as an opportunity to create a rim light. If I get her a little closer to some of those windows, the bright highlight bouncing off of them will light the side of her face and her neck. So I'm gonna have you take a couple steps back again. Let's see, uh, come around this way. And I'm looking for, keep going, oh, right there. A half step back, right there. Beautiful. So you can see, turn your chin this way just a little. See all the highlights now on the side of her face? That is all bouncing off of the windows to the left-hand side of the frame. So look right at me, and I'm just going to treat it as a beautiful little highlight. Gorgeous. Great. 
I really love that rim light on the side of her face. And so I think that's the variation that I'm going to go with. The covered shade, but placing her close enough to that window for a highlight. And so now I'm going to get that beautiful shot. So can you take one more step back? Great, oh perfect, there it is. Let's try some with your shoulders that way. Be oh, now it's raking across her neck beautifully. Great, and then chin back towards me. our third setup, which involves direct sunlight and slices of light. Now, as you can see, direct sunlight, especially in the middle of the day like this, is pretty harsh and unflattering. And so this is not something that I would do for an everyday portrait. Instead, it's something where I want something more sculptural or playing with highlight and shadow. And so I look for slices of light, particularly shadows, like you see cast by this overhang. You can see that sharp line on the wall cast by the overhang. That, to me, starts making me think. Could I perhaps have that slice of light harsh of the way down the subject's face? Or maybe where the bottom of the overhang is, maybe I'll have it so that just her eyes are unlit. And so I know I have a bunch of flexibility when I find slices of light like that. So look for edges of buildings, overhangs, uh, sides of walls, all of those could give you this type of result. All right, so let me show you what I'm talking about. Now, one of the things I want you to notice is that there's deep shadows in her eyes, and that's because it's really, really high noon, sun high up in the sky. So this technique actually works better a little bit later in the day. However, we're going to work with it, and you could add a reflector, or I can pose her in a way that her eyes are closed, maybe chin up to the sky, and so I don't have those deep uh, shadows in the eye sockets. So I'm gonna have you do just that. Good. And now step one step over to your left, just so I get a little more shadow on you. Good, and then lean back to the light a little more, right there. And you're gonna have to take a step back for me. Good, and now lean back into it, good. Beautiful. And now chin towards me a little more. Now chin up. Good. And now can you step flat against the wall? Good, and then just lean your head back like you're reclining. Good. So you can see that I was playing with exactly where that shadow fell on her face, moving her back and forth. And because the sun is so high in the sky, lifting her face up so she wouldn't have such dark shadows in the eyes. But honestly, it's more about a, getting a creative shot than a flattering shot, which is something I definitely think we accomplished. Now for all of these shots, I was shooting with the Canon R5 and the Canon 85mm 1.2. That would allow me to have beautiful crisp eyes, but then make the background melt away, especially if it's not an interesting background. And all we use is natural light. on location. In fact, you don't even need to take a reflector or a diffuser. Instead, what you need to do is practice learning to see the light. And that really does take exactly that practice. Walk around, walk around with a photographer, friend, a model, move them around and see how the position of their head, the position that they are in the environment makes a difference to the light on their face. And then when you find something you like, you find something you love, you register that. And then look for that lighting situation over and over again. If you guys would like to see the gear used in the making of these images, be sure to check out the links in the description below. And of course, visit Adorama.com. Now I have many more videos like this one, everything covering lighting and posing, studio lighting on location and much more. So if you've enjoyed them, be sure to like and subscribe. See you next time guys.